Hey, yeah, man. Tutorials. We're here today learning how to make an online gallery or a virtual showcase room. And we're gonna use Lepentor software, Google Street View, and Photoshop to do it. Lepentor software is a free web-based software to use online. You're gonna to need to know a little bit about Photoshop as well to make it all work. So let's get into it. The first bit starts on your phone. The first thing we're gonna to have to do is download Google Street View, an app to your phone. Google Street View allows you to take a 360 degree or a panorama photo of a room. Alright, so let's just get into making the gallery now. So I've airdropped the photo to here. So what it, what it looks like is a really long photo. So we can click on it and have a quick look at the JPEG. You'll see that's the whole room just laid out flat. Um, so what we're going to do is, um, it's not a very interesting room, so we're going to create our own. So I'm going to take this down to Photoshop, open it up as a canvas, um, and when that's open, then what we're going to do is we're going to come up with a background that we want to use for this. We just go to our internet browser. So I'm just going to open up a new one. By the way, Lapentor is the program we're going to use today. What I did for this one was a brick wall background. So I went for like a black uh, brick wall background. Uh, free stock. Because we don't want to pay for it. Um, otherwise you can pay for it on some of the sites where it's available. All right, so just to save a bit of time downloading things and whatnot and finding things, I've already got a brick wall, this brick wall here. So here it is here. Now all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this brick wall, I'm gonna drag it out. First, it's not gonna let me do it and then I'm gonna convert it to a normal layer. Layer, sorry. If not, you can right click over here and make it a new layer as well. Um, but all I'm gonna do is drag that into my 360 degree picture. And then you can see here it's now created um, that over the top. So what I want to do is I'm just going to drag it out, trying to keep the perspective. So just to the size of the top and bottom at that point, and then double click, and then it's its own layer. So now all I'm going to do is just take that all the way to the end. So it clicks up. I have to overlay this picture all the way through so that it covers this whole picture. So all I do to do that is hold down the Option button or Alt button, depending on whether you're on Windows or a Mac. But I hold that down, I click on the first picture and I drag it, and it makes a second one for me. Yeah, try and line up all your little pink lines and whatnot, and then you'll be fine. And then just repeat this process all the way across. Uh, good. See? And then one more. Alright, so that looks pretty good. I can't see, I can see a slight gap here, so I'm just going to hand it over. Right, and then we're done. Alright, so now you can see I have a brick wall that goes across that whole photo that I took. So the photo itself is irrelevant at the end of the day. Um, you can take it of any sort of square room or, or whatever. And then all I'm going to do is save this file. Once I've got the file, save those, and I'm going to make it a JPEG. So I go down here to Photoshop, JPEG, come up here, I'm going to call it my uh, black. And that's it, then it should be saved to my desktop and then we're ready to go. So here it is here. Alright, so now what we're going to do is we're going to go into that uh, software that I was talking about, Lepentor. All we're going to do is we're going to press the plus button over here to start a new project. Uh, call it whatever you want, so... Uh, yeah. Oops. And then, okay. 
Okay, and the first thing it's going to do is ask you to upload a pano. That means a uh, panorama photo. Um, so I'm going to click on this. Then I have to go to my... Sorry, I've been doing another one for an art gallery. Uh, black wall, black brick wall background. Okay, so this is the one I want. So I double click on this. It's going to import it for me. Okay, and now I'm going to click on the picture and then make a sphere. So I'm just going to make it a standard resolution sphere. All right, there we go, it's completed. So now I can just close this. If I double click over here, there we go, now we have our background. So you can see I probably could have lined it up a little bit better here at the joins and whatnot, but um, just for this demo, I didn't want to spend ages doing that. So now we have our background. Now we can zoom in with this program by using two fingers or zoom out. So the way you do it with your computer normally. Um, and then it's just a matter of starting to lay in what you want to do. So for the background, what I can do is I can go in here and I can do a uh, image hotspot, for instance, and just drop it in the middle here somewhere. And then I can click on here and then it comes up on the side with what I want it to be. This is the upload image. So when you click on that button, what image is going to appear? Here I can select the theme of the way it appears, so the box that it comes in, and I can put some writing in it as well. And then I can also add a URL. So if I'm linking it to a website that already has the photos, I can just do that and it'll just take you straight to that photo. All right, but what I'm gonna do is I can actually click and make an icon. So let's just say I'm going to use piece of artwork or something uh, that I'm not going to tell what using. Oh, let's just say this one, so I'm going to take a finger. Uh, the point finger graphic, and I click on it, choose the file, and now this icon will become this picture, and the size of it I can adjust down here. Okay, and then you have it on here. Sorry, when I click on this, let me just make an upload image. So we'll use the same image that it goes to, choose the file, and all I have to do, uh, let's just say I want it to be in a fancy box so it looks nice, and I'm gonna call it pointy finger. I go down here and save it again. Okay, and now when I click on it, it'll take me to the other picture. It doesn't do it in this mode, I have to go to the preview mode. So I've got another page where I can see it. Um, if it's not there to begin with, you have to find it on your page, okay, there it is. And when I click on this, you'll see the image opens up and pointy finger, that's where my text appears down here. All right, now that's all well and good, but the issue with doing it this way is, as you can see, when I start scrolling around, it changes the perspective and things get a bit weird with the pictures as they go around because they're not on the wall themselves. So once you start getting a few pictures on here and they're crowded up together, that's when you start getting an issue because they start to go over each other. So I'll just show you what that looks like now. So now as you can see, as I go around the wall, it just gets a little bit weird and I don't really like it. So you can do it that way and that's fine and that just makes that picture the hotspot as you're going around. Let's just preview it so you can see it in reality. So as you can see, there you go. So your spacing gets a bit weird and stuff as you're doing it, but that's fine. Um, but the way I like to do it is I then, I would rather try and put these pictures in Photoshop first so it's layered on there. So what I do is I go back into Photoshop here just going to move this over here. I'm going to bring in my pointy finger like that. Move this back. Okay, and now I'm just going to change the image itself to about, let's say, this size. Double click to make it right. All right, and then I'm going to put one here. And then all I'm going to do is just keep repeating this. So I'll just leave it at that. All right, now, so all I'm gonna do now is save this picture again.
All right, so this time, now when we go back into Lepentor, we're going to create a new one again, just so you can see the, the difference between the two. So if I just click back on this home button, it'll take me back to the beginning again. All right, so this time I'm going to go plus. This time I'm going to call it okay, finger one. Go on, okay. Um, and what's going to have to be depending on the phone. So, we're looking for any sort of thing like that. Let's click on this one, we're going to make a standard sphere again. Now I can just escape out of here, double click on this. And now you'll see the images are all on the background looking nice. And when I scroll around, nothing changes. So I prefer that, uh, but it's up to you which way you prefer to do it. And I can scroll in and out and it doesn't really change the perspective too much, so it's kind of cool. All right, the only difference with this way is now these are not a button. So you can't actually open anything by clicking on it. So what I have to do is I come over here. I can put sound on something as well. So say I want to put a, um, just while we're on the subject, a button that you can click and it launches a song. I can do that by just doing this. Uh, put this one here. Same principle as the image. I just click on here, choose the audio that I want. Um, I have to upload it. I have already, I just this one. There we go. Click on it, choose the file. Yeah. Okay, so I can make it do whatever I want it to do. So do I want it to Read to, I don't know what that one does exactly, 180 degrees. I'm guessing it's got something to do with the icon, but the volume of it is here. So um, that's how loud it launches, autoplay on, loop, pause, you know, all those sorts of things. Okay, so I can put a picture on there as well if I wanted to. So it could say like click here for audio or something, but I'm just going to leave it like this for now. All I have to do is come down. Oh, the size of the icon I can change if I wanted to. So let's do that. Um, and just pop it down here. So now, when I click on this, I'll have to preview it for you to see it. It'll launch. And then you can click on it again to get rid of it. You can see there, that's how you do a sound hotspot. I'm gonna delete that now because I don't want it there. Just hit the delete button and it's gone. I'm going to put an image hotspot down here to say click here to view. So what I can do is with this or if there's a video that you want to launch with it, you can do that down here. So you click on this one and it launches a video, an article, a information hotspot or a URL. So all we're going to do though is we're going to come into image hotspot. We're going to put it underneath this finger. And then I created some for another thing that I was doing. So, so we go in here, go upload asset, go into, uh, where was it going, virtual tour that I'm making, and there was one that said click the view. So I'm just going to take this one, download it, I'll click on that, choose the file. Okay, and there's my icon, so I'm just going to make it a little bit bigger. So we know what's going on. Um, remember, I need to set the image that I want it to go to as well, so. The pointy finger is not in here at the moment because this is a new project, so I have to go back to the beginning. And the, remember, the pointy fingers are on the wall now on the background. They're not actually an image that we've overlaid. So I'm going to click on this, which is fine. Right, just to show you again, I'm going to put uh, blah, 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 and just so you can see what different boxes look like. Mine was here, and the icon size is that. Yep, so I'm going to save. Okay, now, that's what it does now, so let's bring it down a bit to here. All right, so now when I click, uh, as you can see, that one kind of distorts with the page because it's the button like what I was showing you before with the picture, but that's okay. So all we do is now click on that and it will launch the finger with this and then you've got blah, blah, blah written down the bottom in that box. So to close it again, you can just click here and then we're done. All right, so I hope that helps. Um, that's pretty much the rundown. Uh, there's obviously a lot more involved as well with the photos and touching them up and making borders and 
making them nice to be displayed in the gallery. Just to show you a version, the version that we did for Cecil Hills High School, you can see on here that when we click on each thing, you'll see what's happened. So you have to take, you know, as nice a photo as you can. So then when I click on here, it comes up with the box and you've got the writing down the bottom, so the artist name and their artist statement. And then you can see these borders around here. So what, what that is, that's done in Photoshop with some inner glow and things like that. That's about sort of cropping out the photos, making them look nice. Um, and then you can zoom in on them, trying to make sure there's enough detail in there that when you see it. So as you can see, some have white borders, some have sort of glow around them and whatnot. That's about it. So this one sort of cropped out around the table. Let's see, so most of the work here is in the cropping and making the photos look nice for the gallery. Um, but once you get into the program, it's pretty straightforward and pretty easy. All right, so I hope that helps anyone with uh, using LePentor software. I guess you still need to have a pretty good working knowledge of Photoshop to make it all work as well. Um, and getting that photo from the phone first. All right, thanks very much, and I'll see you in the next video.